because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you wanted to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my sight for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. She's been living alone here for, what, six years? Ever since the scandal that ruined her career. Are you kidding? That's perfect. May I see your invitation, please? Gracias, senor. Enjoy the party. Evening, senor. Would you care for an aperitif? Thank you. So, you must know everything that goes on at the event. Care to give me the lowdown? Mm, let's see. Most of the guests have already arrived. And let me tell you, it's like a Forbes 500 convention in there. Most are high-profile clients of Morgan, Yates and Paul. But the Yates are still no shows. Word is, they're still up at the house. They haven't made an entrance yet. Curious. Any idea? I probably shouldn't be saying this, but word is that Yates was in a great mood this morning, but that whole chain when the letter arrived. The letter? Yeah, an honest to God letter delivered by courier. I mean, who writes letters anymore? Anyway, it must have been bad news because Senor Yates heard the plant off the balcony. Big everyone, too. It almost hit Isabel, one of the maids who had to go lie down. Anything else? The party is not the only thing happening at the estate. The winery is open for guests, too. You should check it out if you're interested in winemaking. It's harvest season, after all. I might just do that. Thank you for your time, miss. All right. Pleasant evening, senor. Thank God it's fine here. My apologies. I didn't recognize you. Let me sign you in. Luther, Burnwood's flying solo. I want all eyes on. Let's see what she does. And Luther, please deploy the birds and key in on the party area. Whisper to Finn. Too many blind spots. Anyone as much as sneeze in the wrong direction, I want to know about it. They're all done. And I see your tour guide is none other than Gabriel Vargas, this rich cheap winemaker. Well, 
This is a real privilege. You are not a case. Very close. Corvo, got a message from the boss. And he calls. Let me guess, the Burnwood woman. That's right. Gates has arranged for the chief winemaker to take Burnwood and Tamara Vidal on a grand tour of the estate. Wants you to tag along. Not for my sparkling personality. This Burnwood woman sure has his panties in a twist. Wonder what the deal is. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign in at the visitor center. Oh, have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. Makes me sentimental. A private tour of the estate. Diana, Vidal, and this fixer, Corvo Black. Black is a threat, but also an opportunity. Yates' own machinations are inconsequential. Joining the tour will give access to Vidal, away from the crowd. I will tell you. Mr. Yates. Yeah. You mind telling me what I'm. Yeah. Spoils a party like guests inexplicably. Fake a couple of spots come to mind. On the tour or after. Stand by. So you're not sure? Does that mean there's a plan A? One where I don't stand a 50 50 chance of getting caught? I mean, you do realize the risk here, of course. Broad daylight, workers around. Who exactly is this? But if I'm going to be one of these heralds, you need to start letting me in. It's not even been appointed. Caution and modesty has been done in style. Did you see the one? I'm more of a beer man myself, but if Yates wants to bring the heralds closer together, I just never framed an urban legend before. Very post true. I like it. Edwards always was a bit aloof. Plus, he has good reasons. He is Edward's closest legal advisor. Not even Thomas Cross or Eugene Cobb had a direct line of contact. I'd say Yates is at the top of a very short list. So, how do you feel about Burnham? How do you think? She and her friend killed Yamagata. Hello there, and welcome to the Yates Winery. How may I help you? Corvo Black. I'm on the tour. Right, Mr. Black. Welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the wine fields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. Wow. 
one of the most gifted surveillance specialists ever to graduate from Kent. Ran one of our interrogation labs. You ask me, the Constant must have lost his mind. Burnwood was in league with Grey. She's responsible for killing how many of our people? How could she be a herald? Maybe Vidal will trip her down. Over here! You two must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's the ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black, I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. That's a boy. Do try and bring him back in one piece. Counterintuitive intuitive as that may be. That was a bit rude. Yes, yes it was. And from that smirk of you. What? What is it now? What? You have some guests waiting. Senor Yates wanted you to give them the grand tour. Remember? If I don't have more important things to do than babysit Yates' socialite friends, it's only harvest season. Better do what he says, Patron. Big shot New York lawyer like that. You don't want to get on the bad side. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have decided if the cop is right or the king. Bring me the three more big grapes to taste from all. If Yates doesn't like how I prioritize, he can weigh me down with concrete and toss me off a bridge. How's that? Uh, three grapes, was it? I'll get my picking knife. Come on. I left it right. Este hombre si no tiene la menor idea de lo que está hablando. Para hacer la bandeja, la bandeja no se hace así. ¿De dónde sacó que se...?
Mr. Vargas, I have the three grapes you requested. Yes, good. Bring him here. Now, let's see. A lovely inky black color. Good size. Large and firm. Seeds. Brown. Excellent. Finally, taste. Mm. Sweet, flavorful, robust tannins. Some floral notes. Marvelous. Why, I say these grapes are ripe for harvest. And for the workers, will you, Ramon? I have a third to conduct. Will do. Hello, wine lover. Hello. Welcome hey. to Viñeda Yates. <clears throat> I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief wine maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to hey. harvest this year's crop. Great expectations. So, how do you like Argentina? Yeah, like hey. everywhere else, full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are well assessed. We insist on the steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, a trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. Then one. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. Oh, I believe Mr. Black here is something of a jack-of-all-trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes to its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol, in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser for the longer, secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? How about you, Mr. Black? You look like you have something on your mind. I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way. What can you tell me about this freezer? This is an industrial cold storage unit where we keep our excess grapes stocked to prevent decay. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay in here for long. No kidding. Hey, there's no doorknob on the inside. Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission, if you ask me. Probably soundproof, too. And good luck getting a phone signal. Such imaginations you have. But there really is no need to worry. Why? We haven't had an accident since Mrs. Yates' dog was run over by a gray picker. Now, are there any more questions? Don't be shy.
What can you tell me about this grape crusher? Well, as the name implies, it crushes the steamed grapes into a thick pulp or must by a powerful rotating cylinder. She is one of the most important appliances in our production pipeline. Have you had any workplace accidents? What? Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp? You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space, if you ask me. Yes, well, fortunately, we have had none of that. So if there's no further questions... No way. This damn mierda keeps happening to me. And running. Any further questions? Ask away. What can you tell me about this device? Grape presser, was it? That is correct, senor. After primary fermentation, the mass is pressed through a fine filter, leaving only the flesh and skins behind. I should add that grape stomping, the iconic practice of crushing grapes with your bare feet, is historically red and mostly a tourist gimmick. But you are most welcome to try. Imagine you're a grape. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pass. Go on. I'll take a picture of the three of you. Oh, come on, Tamara. When in Rome? Fine. Say que so. May I see that, Mr. Vargas? I believe I blinked. is what the little guy feels like. No, nope. all good. Looks like one for the mat. Anything else you wish to know? There's really no trouble. I'm interested in these containers. Ah, yes. Our large fermentation tanks are constructed from solid French oak and each contain up to 500 gallons of grey mass. Interesting. Are those cooling sockets? They are indeed, senor. The cooling system allows us to fine-tune the entire process. Temperature, humidity levels, etc. Our goal here at the Gira Gates is quite simple. From the state of the yard, by making this our carefully nurtured grape stock, hand-picked with loving care by local experts, we have only one purpose, to make the best vinos in Argentina and beyond. Well, looks like an accident waiting to happen. Occupational hazard. Aberwood? Let's continue to the barrel room, if you'll follow me. What happened to your colleague? Urgent call. Something about work. I don't think she'll be coming back. Oh, well. I'm sure she can find her way out. Let's proceed.
And so we arrive to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah, Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine herald once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Yates wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house. Special occasion. What? What? Did aliens land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon, and Ava Perone unexpectedly come for dinner? Help me out here. What could possibly be so special? Above your clearance, Flowers. Just fetch it already. Fine. What's the passcode again? Last year of World War II. You have to look it up? Shame on you. A meeting in the root cellar. And judging from Yates's choice of wine, some type of celebration. Likely a gathering of heralds come to congratulate Yates on his upcoming promotion. Diana's presence, a calculated risk. terminal is open the security room. You don't drink the 1945 Grand Paladin any more than you would write a shopping list on the Mona Lisa. Ugh, men like Don Gates know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. I am sorry, brother. 
So, what if we exchanged the labels? Served him a different wine. Ah, you are devious, Santino. But... If Mr. Yates wishes to destroy something beautiful, I will not stand in his way. That is between him and his creator. How did he even get his hands on a bottle? I hear the last of the 45s were sold to Sheikh Omar Al Ghazali for $600,000. Most expensive bottle ever sold! Ah, uh, yes. Uh, a curious story. You see, that bottle you refer to came from a case of 12 which were recovered from a sunken Carlisle shipping container that went down in the South China Sea during the final days of World War II. Now, of those 12, only five were raised intact. Al Ghazali bought one under great media coverage, while the others simply disappeared, quietly obtained by some clandestine private collector until one of the bottles was donated to Mr. Yates by Byron Washington, CEO of the Pax Mundus Foundation, as a reward for winning a court case. Now, Byron's twin daughters were treasure hunters, so that explains how he managed to get first pick. Ah, but you see, I was here when the bottle arrived, and the crate it arrived in bore a curious logo, something called the Ark Society. Intriguing. Do you know what it means? Well, not a clue. And now, we will never know. Oh, you don't get attached, Santino. For all fine things in life are transient. Check that out, would you? Bingo. Got you. Hey, Flowers! Over here. Come on, while we're young. Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be 
bigger. Come on, flowers. Guests are waiting. Down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting off. You want to pass? I check your pockets. That's not up for discussion. There's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me. All right, all good. Go on. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. Place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me, your majesty. I have always considered the heralds the unspoken heroes of Providence. The nervous system. Effectively and reliably trans... Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something... quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Art Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable, because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend, Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom! Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Absolutely, Absolutely right. Absolutely. Perhaps Edward simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant. And following this childish outburst, I dare say I am in the lead. Don. I mean, what, what the hell? hell? You're lying, of course. Which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. 
you are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? I'm in. Yes. 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 I agree. I'm in. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue Agent 47. Revenge for her changing side. Hey there, big guy. Que hubo, pues? heard something. I don't know. I'm gonna go check it out. Floor and get yourself a guard outfit. Mm. Yates won't be long.
I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B. Start prepping the crime scene like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Cortazar will bring the package. Get it done. Miss Burnwood. You rolled Say, out the red what? carpet just for me. Don, you shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one oh, thing just before we part ways. Why me? Why me? Why? Why? Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale, and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment was just the feather in his cap. By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. <laughs> Turns out this woman will be your downfall. If it's any consolation, no. Don, what you're you in you asshole? Down. Do I stand there! Constant. Shoot her! And I will make it my mission to tear down Providence brick by brick. Finish it. Such a good boy. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately.
47. It's done. Now what? Now we strike at the heart. Edwards, you know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand's neurotoxin. Transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. Are you still here? Still clinging on to your self-image. Agent 47, the Apex Predator. Oh, 
always hiding behind the headlines. Was perfection its own justification? Or a willful distraction? A wall built contract by contract to shield you from the uncomfortable truth. You're exactly the tool they bred you to be. <laughs> Quite a piece of work you are. How could you possibly function on your own? You never even had a name. Until I gave you one. That's him. Burnwood never ceases to surprise me. You really are a most singular individual. And to think she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. What's he doing? Is he still looking at us? I'm afraid so. Poor Sap just won't accept his days are done. Perhaps I should take him out to the woods and set him free. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> he was a loyal tool. But everything goes the way of the horse and cart eventually. I couldn't agree more. Are you done? The toxins are playing into your fears. Don't let them. Come on. Gotta get your head straight. She wants me dead. She has every right to after what we did. But that's not what is really going on. She chose power. In the end, she was just like them. No. She found a way to turn Edward's own cleverness against him. The rest is up to you. I don't know how. You do know. Once you dispose of Edwards, I will dismantle Providence from the top down. It will finally be over. All you have to do is embrace the past. <laughs>